Because he, she had never been looked at, I think that Alexia became this kind of, um, um, yeah, person who was completely led, completely led by her impulses. Like she did not have any boundaries. She, she did, in the, at the start, I mean, she doesn't have any boundaries. She doesn't have any limits. 42. Let's start with the title of the movie, okay? Titan refers to the titanium plate in Alexia's head and it represents uh, uh, a sort of symbol of her uh, transhumanity, okay? And uh, mm, I want to ask you what kind of non-humanity, of alternative humanity, you want to tell in the story of the film? Well, in order to answer that, I'm going to also add uh, something about the title. Is that, in fr you know, in French, è un po' come in italiano con la A, in French, when you add an E, to a noun or to an adjective, it feminizes it, okay. you know? So for me, it's a pun on obviously uh, titanium, so the metal, titan, and uh, a form of feminization of the word titan, le titan. Uh -huh. um, normally, the female titans are called the titanites, but adding an E for me is to, in order to try to uh, make it feminine. Uh, I think talking about transhumanism as far as Alexia is concerned, um, as far as Vincent is concerned, I agree. I think in terms of Alexia, it's more for me a low level of humanity. It's not a transhumanity like it transcends. It's more like this metal in her head makes her um, less human, you know? And at the start of the film, she's clearly not in touch at all with humanity. And actually, I do believe that the humanity in others and in her revolts her, repulses her somehow. She's something, it's something she wants to destroy, actually. Um, so that's why I'm, I don't want to talk about transhumanism for her at this level. For me, it's like low. Uh, it's under, underneath humanity. It's in, it's in the ground. It's something that is, um, that is way darker than this. Um, but, obviously, at the end, um, the irony of her character is that the more her body transforms into something that is less and less human, the more she humanizes herself with being in touch with her emotion and feeling love for the first time for someone. So that's the whole irony of the character, which makes, for me, the end being both tragic and also incredibly optimistic, you know. And it's true that at the end, I really wanted to um, try to um, um, end on the, on the birth of a, of a new humanity, of a new world that is, um, let's say, um, that, that looks less human, um, that can be called more monstrous, because, you know, uh, I can't make any spoilers, but you know that there is more metal at the end. And this more metal actually makes, for me, uh, um, this humanity stronger. It's like the, 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 the strength of the end, the strength of our new character, is the strength also that stems in, in, in that monstrosity somehow. It's like monstrosity makes you stronger. So that was super important for me. And I want to say also that throughout, because you were talking about the metal, there is also a transformation of metal throughout the film. It's like at the beginning, for me, the metal is um, seen as something that is um, at the beginning some like the inside of your of the character because you know we have these shots like through the engine and under the car and then you get to that spinning wheel very fast and for me all this represents a journey inside the body of my character the engine being the intestines and the long pipes being the spine and the spinning wheel would be the brain all right so that would be something but that's inside right that's inside her and afterwards, you have the cars and all this, and the, 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 the car accident, and all of a sudden, metal becomes this dead material that is absolutely not responsive, that is heavy, and, uh, and that is, yeah, dead, as opposed to flesh, okay? At the end, what I tried to do is to actually make the, um, the metal alive. And again, I'm not going to talk about what we see at the end, but I think you understand what I mean, you know? in order for it to transcend its own condition of metal. Okay. About this uh, metamorphosis, this process of metamorphosis of the protagonist, okay, um, 
you bring the focus uh, on, uh, I think, uh, gender uh, liquidity, okay? Fluidity. Fluidity, <laughs> Sam, sorry. And uh, how much is important to talk about this topic uh, in, uh, in cinema today, and how do you work in this sense uh, to uh, show this metamorphosis? But in my, within my work, it's incredibly important because uh, I don't know if you've seen my first short, yes. Junior, yeah. So I think there is a big um, continuity in the reflection that I, I try to uh, follow up around gender, from Junior to Raw to Titan, uh, in order to actually try to uh, understand what gender is. And um, I think that probably for me, in junior, gender was a form of monstrosity, all right? The gender of my character is seen as a form of monstrosity. And actually, it's a monstrosity that she shares with all the girls as well, in a very, like, like a small comedic twist, you know, in the short. Afterwards, um, in, in Raw, it was more about, um, uh, you know, questioning what we think about gender and, and basically the social construct behind this, you know, um, like uh, girls, a young teenager who looks like super, you know, um, somehow angel-like a little bit, you know, who looks like she's super innocent and stuff like that. And actually showing that this is just like, um, um, let's say a facade somehow, and that inside of her something way more monstrous, way more violent, and way more uh, ambiguous starts emerging. So that was grave, or raw. With Titan, I go a step further, and I actually wondered if gender is actually relevant at all in order to define someone, you know? And I think it's not at all. I do think that what I tried to do through her transformation is to accept that the question of gender is not what makes my character evolve at all. It's really like what, what evolves in her is her capacity of actually um, letting this behind her and try to be in touch with her emotions, her humanity in this relationship with Vincent and that at the end who she is, what she is, who she is, is no longer important. What's important is how she looks at Vincent and how he looks at her. And they look through each other, you know, they, they look beyond all the determinism, all the gender, all the fantasies and the lies that both of them have told each other from the start of the film, because he's in fantasy so much, so he wants a son, he wants a son, so she's going to be the son. But at the end, when she's on the truck, you know what I mean? Again, it's like at this moment, for me, she's completely complete for the first time of the film. It means she's Alexia, she's both Alexia, Adrian, she's both human, but she has metal parts as well. And all this is like completely, um, let's say, um, com completely full somehow. And, and, and that's actually what I want, that, that, that's a step further in my reflection. Uh, in gender, and it's also, I mean, very much how I hope that um, we could see gender as well, meaning that gender is something that should not define who you are and deeply, I mean, really, and who you're going to become, you know. And uh, this journey that protagonists make, okay, is in a very stereotypized context, context, okay, and he found this love with his father, okay? Do you think this love, uh, maybe a parental one, okay, or similar, uh, is what you can give you the freedom uh, or to be you really are? Um, for one thing, I don't think that Vincent only gives her paternal love. I think it's much more ambiguous than this because what I tried to um, what I try to show here is that their love is completely unconditional and absolute. And in that respect, for me, it embraces all types of love that there are because it's kind of like indeed father-son, it's also father-daughter, it's also kind of lovers somehow. It's also, um, it's also um, let's say, this kind of like very um, intense and deep companionship, like, that, like they recognize each other, you know, for who they are. And uh, so for me, it's so much more than this. Um, 
And I think that it's not that it gives her freedom. I think it gives her... Do you want me to wait? I don't think it gives her freedom. I think it gives her contours, you know? It gives her a shape. And what I mean by a shape is that I mean it gives her humanity, you know? Um, she doesn't have this at the start because at the start, she has a biological father who denies her very existence by never ever looking at her. Vincent constantly looks at her. The biological father was not looking at her at all, or maybe indirectly through a review mirror or through bars and stuff like that, but doesn't acknowledge her existence. And I think, by the way, that this is like the biggest violence of the film to me. I think this is like the most cringiest, the cringiest part of it when I watch it, to be honest. Um, and, um, and so, yeah, I think because he, she had never been looked at, I think that Alexia became this kind of, um, um, yeah, person who was completely led, completely led by her impulses. Like she did not have any boundaries. She, she did, at, the, at the start, I mean, she doesn't have any boundaries. She doesn't have any limits. She doesn't have any respect for each other, um, for other people's boundaries and other people's lives. You know, and I think the reason why is because she doesn't have any contour because no one looks at her ever. Or she's looked at in the car show, but they're not real looks. They are just, they're fake, you know, they're just looking at the, at the fantasy that they, that they crave, you know, when she's on the car. So, um, so yeah, it's not really freedom. It's more like a shape, a contour that is humanity. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm.